Hey guys, in my last video I talked about a couple of different games and I highlighted Flight Rising's playability. There were some questions of how that gameplay session looks like because many people find Flight Rising to be either confusing to understand or tedious or grindy while I'm praising it for not being those things. So I thought I would kind of walk you through my relationship with Flight Rising and an explanation of the gameplay elements and how they work together in what I believe to be a really intrinsic way. Keep in mind, I've been playing Flight Rising since probably a, a year, the year of its launch. <laughs> So that's like what been seven or eight years now so they had a very gradual development period where there wasn't very much content on the site at all and over the last eight years they've added a bunch of content so it's a lot easier for me to really see how the pieces are connected because i was there as they were being rolled out where if you're joining today i understand there's a lot to understand and get familiar with there's a big like startup cost so i'm here to explain my relationship and the way that i understand flight rising i recorded the standard game session on flight rising this is what i would do on a standard game session if i don't feel like playing any extra this is what I think of as a satisfying experience with the game, and it's under three minutes, so I will pause it to further clarify what I'm doing. The first thing I do is go gather. I'm going to gather in fishing, hunting, insects, and foraging in that order of priority because most of my dragons eat fish. I'm going to do it in the location where the holiday is. If you forget that, it's no big deal. There are plenty of other ways to get holiday currency. It's just that since it's a holiday, I'm gonna make that extra effort. Sometimes I'm too lazy and I don't do it. I only gather for food to get food points. So I'm gonna to go to the hoard now and turn that food into food points. I'm gonna turn all of my food except for two plants because I don't really need that many plants, not many of my dragons eat plants, so I don't need to turn those into food points. I'm gonna use them as items in the different process. I'm gonna break them down in a crafting feature. Next, I go to my dragon lair and I'm going to feed my dragons using those food points that I just created. You click on feed to do this and it tells you how many food points are used. Next, I'm gonna to go to the nesting grounds and incubate my nests. I like to stagger my breeding program so that on any day that I log on, I have a nest ready to hatch and that means there are four in progress. So you have to incubate every time you log in and then set a new nest to breed every time that you log in. This is really different for most players. I like to do it this way because all of my goals, all my breeding goals are long term. I like to think of this more as pruning a bonsai garden than an immediate gameplay activity, right? This isn't something that you see a fast return on. I'm looking for returns over years instead of over days. So this is a game that really takes place more in your mind. It's more strategy. It's more long term. It's less something that you immediately see. Next over to the trading post where I'm going to do Crim's Collection Cart and Pinkerton. Those are just quick clicks to get through. It takes no time, hurts nobody, helps everybody. The next task is Baldwin's Bubbling Brew, which is a crafting feature. You can do this theoretically multiple times a day. I throw in those plants from earlier and I'm going to break those down because you can make those into other food items. So this is what I do. It's optional. You could do it multiple times a day. I do it at least one time a day. The final task in my daily run through of Fly Rising is I go and I bond with this little selection of familiars in the trading post. This is a new feature that was recently added and it's eight random familiars regardless if you have them or not. And then you can just rapid fire bond with all of them and get rewards. Sometimes you get bonus rewards. I enjoy it. I like this little mini game and it really condenses something that can be a very long game. The, the familiar bonding game takes a long time to go through in a dedicated sense and this is like a condensed version. It's like a snackable snack size version that lets you do a significant amount of bonding in a very short period of time.
That's what my daily play session on Flight Rising looks like. And I know what you're thinking, Julie, the time code on the video said it was 2 minutes and 40 seconds. However, I scrubbed through the video length on YouTube and it was 3 minutes and 30 seconds. How do you explain that minute discrepancy? And that's because I slowed down the footage of parts and that's why I kept that time code so you could see kind of what the difference of time actually looked like because I had to slow it down in order to talk and explain what I was doing. That two minutes and 40 seconds, you know, it might have impact depending on what my internet connection is like. Today I was kind of able to rapid fire through everything. It could take longer depending on internet speed. But to me, that is what it looks like when I do a flight rising play session. It takes less than five minutes for me to accomplish the things that I need to accomplish on flight rising. And I know what you're thinking, Julie, that's a really bare bones play session. And you're right. There's a lot more to do on flight rising and I'm gonna go through them a little bit. But when I talk about flight rising as my daily play that I play every day, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about what just happened on the screen. Now that we've covered what I do every day on flight rising, and to be clear with you, most days that is the extent to which I'm playing flight rising. I have a full-time job, I have a dog, I have a cat, I have groceries, I go to the gym, I run. You know, I'm not a fan of spending all my free time on the computer. Like I prefer to have less screens in my life, not more. So the majority of my life, that is the extent to which I'm playing Flight Rising. However, there are days where I'm like, hey, I've got an hour of free time. I'm going to like really play the game. That's when I do these additional activities. So I'm gonna go through familiar bonding, some item management, and then I'm also going to go through the auction house a little bit, but these are extra things that you don't need to do. Like it's more like spice to add on to the game if you're really interested in active interaction with a site. So first we're gonna start with familiar bonding and familiar bonding is the process of going through the account and interacting with every dragon and their familiar. I have 177 dragons and all of the dragons that are not for sale on my account have familiars attached. So I go through this process like when I've got to, like some time to kill because it is a great way to make currency but it's also not required and like I said it's like spice on the game. It is kind of grindy I guess when I think of grindy I think of like tedium required with like enough mental uh, interaction required to make it f hard to do without paying attention. So for me, you could do this entire thing without paying attention. So it doesn't really feel grindy to me. If I had to like click on dialog boxes as I was going through it and choose the right answer, then perhaps it would feel grindy because I wouldn't be able to really get into flow. But because I'm able to get into flow, it doesn't really feel like grindy. I'm going to speed this up. I thought in my head that this was going to take like 15 minutes, but I believe it ends up only taking about six minutes to go through all 140, 177 dragons. And as I mentioned before, that has a lot to do with internet speed. If you have throttled internet or siblings on Zoom or whatever, it's probably going to take a lot longer than six minutes. But for me on this day, that's how long it took. After bonding with all my familiars, I would go to my hoard and then open all the treasure chests to see what I got. This is on a day that I feel like interacting with items. Also, it's kind of like immediately positive and rewarding to open chests. It gives me that little boost of like, hey, this game's fun. And if I feel like doing some dragon management, I'll go check out those dragons that I hatched today and decide if I want to put them in the auction house or not. Uh, for these dragons, the answer is yes, I do want to put them in the auction house. They're not what I was looking for. What you might notice if you're a person who can't like really get into Flight Rising because it just feels like a lot of clicking boxes on pages, then I've got bad news for you. Like the thing I like about Flight Rising is that it's a lot of clicking boxes on pages. The fact that it's mostly in my head, so to speak, because that's the enjoyment that I get from browser-based virtual pet games. Like Neopets is like entirely a mental game of like e 
it's an economy where you're just managing your assets. So the part of the game that I like the most is being able to do long-term planning. If you are more interested in like immediate like response, like then I guess the Coliseum is something for you if you're like more visually stimulated. There's also dressing up your dragons. There's a forum. But for me, like when I talk about Flight Rising being well designed, it's that I can be fully invested in the game through these interactions. You know, it's what nine minutes of video time, but only five minutes of play time. And I like that, that I could either spend as much time as I want on the site or as little time. It's flexible, but it meets me where I am. And what was so positive about the the most recent event, the dust carve dig, the dust cave dig, was that you could participate with the event just by doing those activities that I did in the first three minutes of game session. And you didn't have to do anything more, but if you chose to do more, you were rewarded for doing so. The fact that you have the choice is what's really special about Flight Rising because my favorite part of the game is breeding the dragons, but that's not something that you could do quickly and immediately. You can only basically hatch at most five nests a day if you've planned for it for at least five days. For me, it's more about the long term. I enjoy it as more of like an exercise of gradually building something for myself than the type of reward that I would get from playing City Skylines, which is a visual immediate reaction game. And if I was looking for that reaction, that engagement, then I would go to that game, not Flight Rising. I hope this clarifies a little bit like where I'm coming from when I talk about Flight Rising. You know, I have... <laughs> The way that we talk about it with children is like an overactive imagination and the way that we talk about it in adults is really different like uh attention deficit or whatever i don't care <laughs> like i like the things i like and i'm really good at what i do so i mean whatever um so for me like this type of game browser-based virtual pet games really speak to me and the way that I play, because I play with spreadsheets and I play, I play with numbers. And that's what's fun for me. And if these things aren't fun for you, that's fine. There's no right or wrong way to enjoy a game. And there is no wrong opinion of disliking a game because you don't find it to be fun. Fun is different for everybody. This is what's fun to me. <laughs> so that's why I play it. I'm trying something a little bit new with these videos, and you may have noticed it, like when I was flubbing words, I wasn't cutting it out as much, and I just like come to realize that um, it's a little bit unsustainable the way that I record my videos. You guys may have noticed it over the years that like I really dice up my words because I have a speech impediment, and it's really hard for me to get through consecutive sentences without flubbing a phrase or a word and I realized that other YouTubers just are better at speaking and that's fine and I don't need to pretend to be like them in order to be good at making these videos. So um, I hope you <laughs> bear with me a little bit. <laughs> sometimes you know it takes a while to come up with the right word or to even make my mouse make my mouth produce that word and that's okay um i've also paused my patreon because i just don't feel like i can fulfill the obligation and that it's not fair to receive money when i'm not giving back so i will keep the patreon credits up because those people have intended to support me but I am pausing my Patreon because it's giving me a lot of extra stress that I don't really need. Thank you for watching this video. I hope I answered some fundamental questions about Flight Rising and how Flight Rising works and how it is enjoyed by me and I've heard other people enjoy it for the same reasons. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. I don't frequently make videos about Flight Rising because there's not a lot for me to cover. But if you guys have concerns, um, just let me know in the comments. Bye!